Good afternoon, Your Excellencies. Your Excellency President Pavel, a very warm welcome to Rwanda. Your Excellencies, we have here members of the press, and before we proceed to take questions from them, I would like to ask if you have any brief statements you'd like to make. Your Excellency President Kagame, may I invite you to make your remarks? Excellency Peter Pavel, uh, President of uh, the Czech Republic, members of uh, the delegation and uh, the media, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. President Pever, I welcome you uh, with pleasure and uh, together with your delegation uh, to Rwanda. Once again, I want to thank you for being with us to commemorate the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Um, the Czech Republic played a prominent role in calling for action to stop the genocide. We will always be grateful to uh, Ambassador Carol Cover, Covenda and to the Czech Republic. This spirit of solidarity and of speaking up against injustice creates lasting bonds of friendship and respect. The president and I had very productive discussion. We value our close collaboration in the defense and security and many other areas. Together, I want to strengthen our cooperation in health, um, it complements Rwanda's efforts to invest in health infrastructure and our medical workforce. We welcome Czech entrepreneurs to come to Rwanda and start businesses. Our strategy has been to establish an enabling policy and regulatory environment. Last year, Rwanda opened an embassy in Prague. We are confident this will bring us even closer together. Mr. President, I thank you once again for honoring us with your visit. And uh, thank you all for your kind attention. May I present, invite you to take the floor if you wish to. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, and uh, dear members of your delegation. I'm uh, really honored that uh, we were invited uh, with uh, my delegation uh, to take part in the commemoration of uh, 30th anniversary uh, of uh, uh, genocide in Rwanda, which uh, we uh, have to remind ourselves uh, for not to repeat uh, such a horrible event, uh, to, uh, to, to allow it to happen again. Uh, we also uh, take uh, this opportunity uh, to uh, extend uh, our partnership uh, with uh, Rwanda, which already has uh, very sound foundations. Uh, in uh, the areas uh, of um, security and defense, uh, in uh, the area of um, medical support, in the area of uh, wildlife protection, uh, um, infrastructure, uh, and then also other areas. Uh, I have uh, found uh, in uh, uh, President Kagame uh, a partner with uh, goodwill. And uh, as we say, wherever uh, there is a goodwill, uh, there will uh, be soon uh, also concrete results. And we are ready 
uh, to uh, build on uh, this goodwill uh, and uh, to open uh, other uh, chapters uh, for expert uh, discussion uh, so that uh, we can identify uh, new areas uh, for cooperation. Uh, I take uh, the partnership uh, and cooperation with uh, Rwanda as uh, mutually beneficial because uh, both sides uh, have a lot to, to offer. Uh, I would uh, like to express uh, uh, my great respect uh, to the progress uh, that um, your country uh, under your leadership has done uh, over the last uh, 30 years, uh, building not only on uh, 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 ending, ending hostilities, uh, reconciliation, uh, but also uh, building on uh, new technologies, uh, building on support to innovation, uh, building on uh, support uh, to uh, new approaches uh, to uh, administration. I think in a number of areas, uh, your country uh, could serve as an inspiration uh, even to, uh, to, to, to countries in Europe, to us, uh, certainly. Uh, so um, you know, we will uh, take this opportunity. Uh, we will uh, develop uh, uh, other uh, areas uh, for cooperation. We will uh, also open it uh, in the uh, Czech Republic uh, to encourage uh, our uh, people from business and, uh, and education science uh, to look uh, closer at the opportunities uh, in, in Rwanda. And I'm, I'm uh, confident uh, that we will be able in a uh, short time uh, to uh, uh, significantly extend, extend our, our partnership. Uh, we also discussed uh, broader issues of uh, security, not only in Africa, but also uh, globally. And I'm glad that uh, we came uh, to uh, a common understanding in a number of areas, uh, because um, uh, as uh, uh, small countries, uh, we have the uh, uh, same interest in preserving stability, extending good partnership and cooperation, because this is the only one, only way how uh, we can we can uh, achieve uh, uh, lasting prosperity for our, our countries. So in that respect, uh, once again, thank you, uh, Mr. President, for the invitation, for a uh, very open discussion. Uh, and uh, I, I'm uh, quite sure that uh, next time, once we will meet, we will uh, do a great uh, review of achievements uh, that uh, we came to. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. Thank you, Your Excellencies. We will now take quick questions from members of the press. We will start with our guests, starting with Jakub. Jakub Santo from Czech Television. Your Excellency, this is a question to both of you. I would like to ask you, uh, in the, in, with respect in the last 30 years uh, of the global situation, do you think the UN and the wider world uh, has learned a lesson from the terrible events that were about to start 30 years ago here in Rwanda? Thank you. Well, let me maybe start. Uh, let me start. Um, the short answer is no. Um, we, at, from my standpoint, we see many mistakes being made before and after we have conflict situations and losing people in big numbers and that bringing destruction of businesses on top of destroying lives and so and then going all over again with the mistakes that uh, do not end uh, these troubles. Uh, so if, if mistakes were learned, there are situations where you look back and say, no, but this problem could have been prevented or could have been stopped immediately uh, it started. If only there was the will to look at things, uh, looking at the root causes, and then fixing that. So there is always an interplay uh, 
with interest, with uh, different uh, distorted views that uh, only add fuel to the fire rather than uh, actually reining in what you have to to bring to an end and, 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 and just doing that. So this is my observation over the last 30 years and given our own experience. Um, well, I could give many examples, but I, I think what I've said maybe says enough. I can only concur uh, with uh, President Kagame because uh, it seems that uh, humanity is uh, very resistant uh, to learning uh, the lessons uh, from uh, their own mistakes. Uh, but uh, at the same time, what I see as a progress is um, uh, growing uh, understanding among a number of nations around the world, uh, uh, quite often of a different opinion on specific issues, but, but uh, uh, being united uh, in uh, major principles. We have seen that uh, during uh, uh, the last uh, couple of uh, UN General Assemblies, where uh, countries uh, from Latin America, Africa, Asia, Europe, agreed uh, on, on some principles, and uh, this is encouraging. Uh, we uh, should uh, uh, seek uh, like-minded uh, partners wherever they are and uh, uh, try to achieve a significant weight uh, to uh, come up with a sufficient con uh, counterbalance against uh, the big uh, actors if uh, they make mistakes. And uh, I think uh, here we, uh, we come uh, to an under under understanding uh, that um, aggression uh, against uh, sovereign countries uh, should always be condemned. And um, uh, we should uh, be credible uh, to uh, ourselves and uh, also to uh, uh, the whole world uh, when um, uh, we protect uh, our actions. And uh, by saying that, I'm al uh, also looking into our own camp. The second question will be from Philbert. Thank you, Excellency. My name is Phil Berijinima. I work for EGA. Uh, my question, Your Excellency, the Rwanda and Czech Republic uh, both went through a uh, diff difficult history. And uh, I would like to ask you, how does this inform the kind of partnership you hope to, to build between these two countries? And also, is there maybe a room for a different way uh, our two continents uh, to relate? Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I think um, there is a, a, a lot in, a, in the histories of the two countries uh, that uh, bring us to being similar in many ways than different. Uh, and um, we, 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 we've learned through that history, our experiences, and um, um, we, we, we try to understand what is right and what is wrong and be guided by what is uh, right. And um, together, uh, based on these positions and principles as the President uh, uh, emphasized, we, we, we can create those examples that speak to the truth and uh, maybe help people see what they are not seeing uh, because they are distracted for many other reasons of interest and so on and so forth. Uh, that there are things we can also live by and do and which will help uh, prevent some of the... But we, we just don't live for these principles and expressing ourselves and doing that. that there are practical things we can do through cooperation. Uh, we find there is a lot we can learn from other people's experiences and, and the capacities they have built over the years uh, to be able to build build our own experience uh, capacities and do things uh, 
uh, in a real sense that give results. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about our people. We, we, as countries, the Czech Republic, Rwanda, they are not just the names. They are people. We are talking about uh, the people in, in these countries. And, and, and uh, these countries, uh, people have aspirations. They have uh, things they have to, they want to live by and do and make progress as, as, as human beings. So it, it's a great pleasure for, for, for us to identify a good partner like Czech Republic and uh, enable our people uh, to do things together and learn from each other and do business with each other and develop. It's the best thing we can have. And uh, on that, the strength that comes out of it, we can build uh, to achieve other things or to work with others uh, in a wider context to, to be able to make our own contributions. We will now take the last question from Czech. Hello, Eliška Fajmanová, CNN Prima News. I also have a question for both of you, uh, Your Excellencies. I would like to ask about the British Rwanda model and the potential Czech contribution to it, if you've also discussed it and with what result. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you say again? The um, British uh, Rwanda model concerning migration. Ah, okay. You wish to say that? You wish to start and then maybe I will chip in. If you okay, thank you. Uh, first, uh, I would like to appreciate uh, uh, the approach of uh, Rwanda that is uh, not only uh, constructive but also uh, humanitarian with regard to the refugees. Uh, of course, um, uh, the process uh, of uh, uh, dealing with the problem uh, uh, where, where it arises is much better than, uh, than resolving it uh, once it, it gets uh, into uh, the first stage. So uh, dealing with uh, uh, all visa procedures uh, in uh, the countries uh, from uh, which uh, the refugees come or a country that is willing uh, to host such a procedure like Rwanda is definitely more effective and uh, more human to the, to those refugees. Uh, I'm uh, glad that uh, the Rwanda is uh, in a good contact with uh, the EU because uh, on the side of the EU, we should uh, be dealing with this issue collectively, not country by country. Uh, but uh, we're welcoming it. And uh, I would also like to mention that uh, Czech Republic has decided uh, to support uh, this uh, initiative by donation of uh, 1 million euro to UNHCR to alleviate uh, the burden on on uh, the Rwandan uh, visa authorities. And the decision uh, will be taken within a uh, within couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I think what we are talking about here, the model, the model is about resolving a problem. There are many models you can use, apply to resolve uh, one problem. You can use different models depending on which one you prefer. It's not just one. But let me quickly give you uh, the understanding of what we've been involved with. Uh, we are in the process with the United Kingdom, uh, but it is not the first. In fact, this also came from something else we tried to handle. Uh, deal with together with the partners. Uh, it was the situation of Libya, for example. There are a couple of other things we did with other places, but the Libyan example. In Libya, there, there, there were people, mainly Africans, going through Libya, intending to cross, or some of them did that. Uh, Mediterranean, they crossed the Mediterranean. Some didn't survive, other, many actually didn't. Others continued crossing. Then even more, many more got stuck in Libya with the situation that developed there, as you know, the conflict that, or the 
terrible situation that happened in, in, in Libya. So in 2018, I happened to be the chair of the African Union. And I brought to the table for discussion how we could be helping on our continent. The aim is not to have people running away from the continent, going somewhere else in a disorganized way or in an illegal way or you know, causing death and mayhem. Uh, so if the, the one way of re preventing that is to find uh, the kind of investments we could make to actually retain these people, give them employment, give them opportunities, schools for young people, and so on and so forth. So the, the, you can't just keep being worried about people leaving the continent without understanding the cause and trying to fix the cause of that to happen. So that, that is what we put on the table. And in the process, working with international partners, we said we, we, we said we, we, we wanted to not only talk about a formula or a model, as you said, without participating in it ourselves. So we said we could bring uh, these uh, migrants who are stuck in Libya or others arriving and so on and so forth. Let's do one thing. We said Rwanda offers that they could be brought here. Being brought here means to be processed or to be taken through a process that can address the problem instead of being stuck in Libya or crossing the Mediterranean and perishing there. Three things we proposed. We said, if you bring them here, certainly we shall provide a better environment than they are facing in this chaos in Libya to begin with. Second, in another fashion, if there are countries that want to take in in their countries these people or some of them, the UNHCR, the IOM, they could then in another fashion process if country X in Europe can take 10 or 100 or 200, process it properly and then they are taken there. The second would be, among these people, if there are those who discovered they made a mistake of uh, rushing into Libya, wanting to cross, and now are tired and they want to go back home, to be taken back home, then they will also be processed and taken back home in another fashion. The third category would be, there will be those who don't find the people to take them to Europe, for example, or they don't want to go back home. We even offered, they said, they can stay here until they find what to do or what, where to go. But when they are uh, in, in a safe environment, because Libya, where they were, there was no safe environment. That's what we offered, that's what we did. And so far we have processed uh, with the UNHCR and other institutions who have processed over 2,000 people. They've been brought here, the UNHCR helped, they bring them, they charter planes, they bring, they ferry them to this place and we have prepared a place where they stay for as long as that is necessary. So, and this has worked on a small scale, of course. So this is what the UK got to know about and approached us to say, can we, we have uh, so many people coming in a very, most of them illegally, others in a very bad way, 
or whatever it was, there are even human traffickers who smuggle people into countries. So I think the, 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 the learning from this, we agreed we could still have another way of doing things. But this time, the people that are being sorted out, uh, in most cases, are already in the UK. So really most of the things that have to be done are with the United Kingdom. For us, we are just uh, participants and offering this facility. In fact, uh, some of them are even confused when they have heard that there is, a, we, call it, we call it migration uh, partnership uh, for uh, also associated with the development. The one thing we did was say, okay, for us, we are a small country, we have no resources. We are happy to play part, but we cannot, we don't have money to feed these people, to do this, for, to invest in. So the money that is being talked about in this is money to help Rwanda settle these people, in fact, the, 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 the UK would look after these people, but in a wider context, develop the environment, meaning they contribute as they have done even before to the development of Rwanda to be able to carry this burden. This, this is what it is. So if this model works for any other person or, or for us, as you have seen, you, you bring people here, but you must foot the bill of their stay here. For us, we're offering, uh, they don't have to pay for oxygen, which they breathe when they are around here. They have to do, there are things they, they don't have to pay for, and uh, they don't even pay for security, which we provide our own citizens. But in terms of livelihood, we are not a country with resources to do this kind of work, looking after people who are in this state, because we already have limited resources to look after our own people. So I've probably given you a very long explanation, but this is what it is. We thank you, Your Excellencies, for your valuable time with us today. Our session here has come to an end. And allow me on behalf of the media to wish you all a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.